Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel, Parenting with Purpose. I'm Christian. And today I want to talk to you about trusting God when it feels like you're in a setback. Trusting God when it feels like you're in a setback. So every day we're faced with making decisions. Uh, you made the decision and the decisions could be big or small, but it's every day. You make the decision to get up and show up for the day. You make decisions on how you use or spend your finances. You make the decision on, you know, how you raise your child, whether your child is homeschooled or you send your child to school. You make decisions as to who, you know, what you will say yes to and what you will say no to. There's, all, there's a lot of decisions that we face daily. You made the decision to watch this video today, and I thank you for that. But we're faced with a lot of decisions every day. But what happens when you make that decision or you make a decision and it doesn't go as planned? Like you have spent time, you've done your best, you've done your research, you've prayed and you feel like you're, you're like you've made the right decision. And then as time passes by, now you don't see the fruit that you were expecting. <laughs> you don't, you're not seeing things go the way that you planned them to go or you know, uh, your expectation wasn't met. What do you do? How do you handle that? And oftentimes our human nature, you know, because we feel bad, sometimes we can feel guilty. We can feel like we've been defeated. You know, it doesn't feel good to know that we've made a decision and it's possibly not, it wasn't the right decision. It wasn't the best decision for us. It doesn't feel good. And so by human nature, sometimes we can try to forget it. We can ignore it and like it'll magically go away or something. <laughs> or sometimes we feel like we can call somebody and talk about it. But at the end of the day, the only thing that we can, the only one we can turn to is God. Because in order to have a comeback or in order to in order to have a comeback you have to involve God in it so if you're in a setback your only way of getting back on track is to turn your turn your your attention to God and so in second chronicles uh, chapter 7 verse 14 uh, it says if my people who are called by my name humble themselves pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So the first step that God gives us, and I really just want to break it down for you, but the first step is to know who you are. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you believe that he died on the cross and rose again on the third day, if you believe that God came to, um, to give us life and to live more abundantly so that we may have life and life more abundantly, if you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, all right, he's talking to you. He said, if my people, you have to recognize the covenant relationship that you have through Jesus Christ with God. All right, so we can approach God through his son, Jesus Christ. We have that relationship with him. When you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have now been adopted. You have now been, uh, have been adopted into God's eternal family. All right, so he's talking to you. If my people who are called by my name, that's what he's saying. All right, so remember, you are a child of the most high God. All right. So the second thing, the second step is he's saying if they will humble themselves. In other words, check your heart. I did a video a couple weeks ago um, about what's in your heart. All right. So check your heart. What's your attitude? Do you realize are you going to stay prideful? Or are you going to stay arrogant and just try to continue life and pretend like it never happened, you know, try to ignore the fact that the decision wasn't, it didn't work out in the way that you expected to. Are you going to stay arrogant? Are you going to stay prideful and try to figure things out on your own? Or are you going to say, you know what, God, I messed up. I messed up and I need you right now. Understanding that you are fully dependent on God. Understanding that without Christ, you can't do anything. Philippians 4.13, it says, uh, I can do all things 
through Christ who strengthens me. And then in John 15, 5, I think it's in John 15, 5, where it says, uh, Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. Okay. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. Nothing, honey. <laughs> apart from God, you can do nothing. Okay. So remember, check your attitude. Check your heart. You have to realize that you are so dependent on God, so much so that you need him for that next breath of air that you're getting ready to breathe in. All right. So again, he says, if my people who are called by my name, humble themselves. Then he says, and pray and seek my face, praying and seeking God's face. Sometimes, you know, all praying is, is communicating with God. All right. And so, um, sometimes I remember there were, there was a time where I really didn't know what to pray. I knew, I knew how to pray, but I wanted to take it up another level. And there were times I just didn't know what to say. You know, I knew it was more in me. I could feel it, but I didn't know what to say. I didn't know the words to say. And so what I started doing was I started praying scripture, which is twofold because not only are you in order to pray scripture, that means you have to get into the Bible. You have to read more, right? So now you're getting into his presence, which is what he wants. So it's twofold. You get into his presence, all right? You're reading the Bible, and now you're praying. Now you're praying scripture, okay? And so in addition to that, um, into sitting in God's presence, now you get to start, you know, memorizing different scriptures. So get into, God, into God's presence. He says, pray and seek my face. There are so many um, ways of getting into God's presence. You know, I personally, I can listen to Audible um, for any other book. But when it comes to the Bible, for some reason, I have to sit with it. I have to look at the words because I like to underline. I like to uh, highlight different things. It just seems like the words pop off the pages when I'm reading, you know, the with a physical Bible. All right. But everybody's different. Um, there is the Bible app. All right. And there are so many apps that you can use to read scripture. Um, but you can listen to the Bible app if you're on your way. You know, sometimes if, you know, if I'm in a car, I'll put on a sermon, you know, because I'm really, I'm really wanting to hear from God. I really want to, I'm seeking him at all times, which is, it's our, it should be our goal to constantly seek God. Okay. So you have so many ways you can get your physical Bible or you can listen to the Bible app, but either way, get into his presence, um, seeking him, meaning look for God in everything. It doesn't mean that you just have to be at home, you know, physically being still and reading the Bible. It doesn't, that's not what that means, but seek God in everything. You can go outside for a walk and look at nature. You can get revelation of who God is just by looking at the birds. You can get revelation by paying attention to ants. Seriously. I remember, <laughs> I remember when... Um, I had to call the exterminator and because we had a huge ant pile in the backyard and I didn't want it to get into the house or under, um, the foundation or anything. And I remember the exterminator, he came and he, I was just talking to him and he gave me a story. He I said, he was, <laughs> he was spraying the ants and he had this stick and he stuck it all the way down. I said, you don't see these ants. <laughs> You don't see these ants that's trying to get away. Why don't why don't you spray those? And he said, well, I'm going for the queen. I said, I understand that. I said, I'm not trying to tell you how to do your job. I said, I just want to know because I'm seeing some of these ants get away and I don't want them in the house. And so he says, yeah, he said, I understand that. He said, but the only reason that these other ants exist is for the queen, is to serve the queen. And I said, oh, my God. That was, I'm talking about ants, but I got revelation from about who God is. Our only reason, our only reason for existing is to bring God glory. Our only reason for existing here on earth is to serve. We're bringing God glory. All right. We're worshiping him. 
we're serving him. We're praising him. Because when we get in heaven, that's what we're doing. We're worshiping him all day. And so that was revelation just from one of his creations. So you can get outside. There was another time when I was at the grocery store and I was at the checkout line. And a woman, I was minding my own business, but it was a day I just was not feeling it. And a lady came up to me and she says, excuse me. She said, I just feel like the Lord wanted me to tell you that, um, that he loves you so much. And just by looking at you, I can tell you know that already. And before she even left, my eyes started filling up because that was a day I know God loves me. But that was a day I really needed to hear those words. I needed that reminder. God loves me. Which means he sees me because he sent a stranger to me. He sent one of his children to come and tell me I love, tell my daughter how much I love her. Remind her. And I needed that in that very moment. So always be open for what God wants to do, but seek him in everything that you do. It's not just at church. It's not just at home in your Bible. Seek him everywhere you go and continue to pray. So he's saying, again, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face. Then he says, and turn from their wicked ways. Girl, if you're doing all this work... <laughs> Best believe you need to be turning away from the very thing that got you into the position that you're in now. Okay, whatever decision that you made, we've all made bad decisions. So you're not in this by yourself. But if you're going to humble, if you're going to remember that you are a child of the most high, if you're going to remember that, you know, to check your heart and humble yourself and go to God because understanding that you really need him for everything right and then understanding that you need to pray and seek his face yes turn from your wicked ways in other way in other words he's saying don't go back to the thing that got you here don't repeat the same steps that got you to where you are from this bad decision so maybe you moved in with a guy and y'all are not married so in other words y'all are shacking up right and now you're in this place where you feel like okay god this is not what I want. And I feel like you're, you know, tugging on me. Like, this is just not what I want. This is not the decision. This is not the, the results that I was expecting. And I've learned my lesson. You know, I'm ready for a comeback. So help me. Get me back on track. Right. Let's say you mismanage your finances. Right. Uh, and you've made and because of that, you've made a bad decision. So now you're facing some things and it's just not it's not good it's like a domino effect right he's saying turn from your wicked ways so how do you turn from your wicked ways if you're mismanaging your finances that means you get a budget you create the budget you stick to the budget it's one thing to create a budget stick to the budget so you're not going back to the same things you're not you know uh behaving in the same way you're not mismanaging your finances the same way let's say you then you lost self-control and by you losing self-control not uh you mishandled yourself right and it got you fired from your job god is saying turn from your your wicked ways don't when i bless you with this next job don't go up in there acting the same way you can't go around you know if you have a customer service job and you get upset and you put you think you put the phone on mute and let's say you didn't and here you are cussing people out you're if you're repeating the same steps that you did from the last job that you got fired from then he in other words he's saying turn from your wicked ways don't repeat the same thing that got you to where you are right now all right we've all made again we've all made bad decisions but just to put it in practical ways, he's saying turn from their wicked ways. Then he goes and he says, then. The word then is a transitional word. It means that there are some prerequisites that need to take place before the next. What happens after the word then, after that, that's what, that is what can happen based on you meeting the requirements of what took place before the then. 
So in order, <laughs> that sounds confusing, hopefully not, but in order for then to take place, in order for what comes after then, you have to meet the requirements that come before then. Okay, so then is a transitional word. So for you to, you know, for you to get to what he is saying then, make sure you remember that you're a child of the Most High. Remember to check your heart and stay humble. Remember to pray and seek your face. Remember to turn from your evil ways. All right, he says, then I will hear from heaven. Pause. For God to say, then I will hear from heaven. That means that as long as you're staying in your evil ways, as long as you're not praying and seeking his face, you know, to help you and realizing that uh, that you depend on God, that you really need God. So you're staying humble and doing wrong. Your prayers are not even being heard. And I don't know about you, but I don't talk to God. I don't pray just for my health. I pray so that he can move on my behalf, move on my family's behalf, move on friends' behalf, right? So he's saying, then I will hear from heaven, all right, and will forgive their sin. You want God to forgive your sin so you can move forward. <laughs> and then he says, and then I will heal their land, meaning God will put you back on track. He will put you back in right standing with him. Then you'll be able to see God move again. So the whole point is trust that God will trust that God has your back. All right. After you have done all of these steps, now you sit back and you trust God. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, it says, trust in God, trust in the Lord. And then he says, lean not onto your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Some versions say submit to him and he will make your path straight. That's what you're doing from 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. You're submitting to him. You're acknowledging him in all your ways so that he can make your path straight. All right. We can do nothing without God. Everything we need, everything that we are, everything that is to come, we need God. So whatever your whatever decision that you've made, go to God and seek forgiveness. Humble yourself. Remember, I'm a child of the Most High God. I don't have to stay here. I don't have to stay here. I don't have to stay here in this mess that I've created for myself. God's grace is sufficient. That's why we can boast in his in his strength because when we're weak, he's strong. His grace is sufficient for the decision that you made. So I hope that's, I hope that helps. Um, that's all I have for you today. But just remember that God is for you and not against you. He wants to help you and he's giving you specific instructions how to create space for him to send you from a, a setback to a comeback, a setback to a comeback. All right. And so, again, I hope this, uh, this helps. If you know someone who can use this message, go ahead and send it to them. But um, go ahead and like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.